Hello guys, welcome back to Kotlin programming tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss about uh, functions in Kotlin. Uh, we'll discuss first why knowing how and when to use a function in your application is a critical skill to have in uh, software development and the importance of it in software engineering as a whole. Uh, this video is a little bit longer because we will cover a lot of style in, in using a uh, function and to provide examples so you can see how it is uh, being implemented in your program. In our previous examples, we saw variables, arrays, and control structures and how to use them. But to create a complete application, we need to know how to structure our program properly. We are doing it by making our application modular. Modularization is important in the field of software engineering because the byproduct of modularization is code reusability. Uh, we programmers hate to repeat things. That is why we avoid repeating codes as much as possible by means of using control structures like if statements and looping. And also having your code modularized makes it easy to maintain. And more importantly, it makes your code easy to understand. Uh, let me describe it by using an analogy. Now we can compare a program or an application to a car. Now before you can use the car, it needs an input from the driver, much like an application. It needs to be started using the car keys. You need to control the gear using the gear stick. To control the direction of the wheel, you need to use the steering wheel and so on. Now, if we think about how the car is built, it is not built out of single material, like a sculpted or a clay car. Instead, each part of the car is created to serve a purpose, like the steering wheel to control the wheel. Buttons to lock the door, on and off the lights, slide the window up and down, and so on. Now each part of the car is communicating with other parts somehow and if that part becomes defective or if it breaks, you can easily change it. Like tires, if you have flat tires, you can just plug it to pump and inflate it. If the rubber of the wheel has hole, you can remove the wheel and change it with new. It means that most of the parts in your car can be repaired or changed. This is possible because most of them are modular. You don't need to disassemble your whole car whenever there is a part that needs repairing. The same thing with programming. By structuring a program as modularized as possible, it can now be easily maintained. Now the important word here is maintained, because modern applications tend to be updated with new features more often, and that also means you are always changing parts of the program to improve it. And maintaining of application also includes bug correction. So if we go back to car analogy, if there's an, a defective car, let's say a buggy part, we can easily remove and change it if necessary, without affecting the overall make of the car. As you can see, we are using the function main all throughout the examples. On other languages, like c -sharp and Java, class is the main building block of code. In Kotlin, since its design is to support functional programming, it is possible to create the whole program without creating any class. Function is the building block for Kotlin. You can declare a function in Kotlin with the following constructs. Uh, it starts with the fun keyword, the name of the function, and the parameter list, if any. So we'll get back to that shortly. So here's the body of the function, which is uh, the open and close curly brace. So let's create a function and name it as greet me. So fun greet me. And let's add a single print inside of its body. So hello, byte head, good morning. Now we can call or invoke a function from another function by calling the name of that function together with the parameter list, so like this. So we can call it inside the main function, so greet me, and then the open and close parenthesis. Then let's run the program. So as you can see, the control is being transferred to the greet me function, and then once the execution of the function is done, it is sent back to the main. Uh, the good thing about using the IntelliJ ID is that there is a lot of uh, visual cues that can help us in our development. For example, you can easily tell where the body of our function is by means of these uh, collapsible buttons. You can click it to collapse and uncollapse the body of our function like this. Also, you will notice that the name of the function is grayed if it is not used. So if we comment the invocation, it is grayed, but if we use it, it is colored yellow. You can invoke the function multiple times if you want. So this is an example of code reuse. Instead of uh, rewriting the printing of the greeting, you just call the function on which it is written. Now you can create a function that can accept a value through the parameter list. 
So let's say we don't want to fix the name here in our greeting. We want it to be flexible by passing a value on it. So you can declare the function like this. So fun, greet with name, and then add the parameter. So we added name as a string, and then on our body, uh, print line, hello there, and then the string template to change the placeholder for the variable name. So when you call it, you need to pass a value on it like this. So greet with name, John Wick. Uh, greet with name Sylvia styles so the strings will be passed back to function then the function can use it inside so let's create another example so let's uh, create a function that will square an integer that you pass so fun square it so number in and then colon in and return number times itself so number times number so this time our parameter has a type of integer and you'll notice I have an int here so this is what we call a return type meaning our function will return a value of type int uh, to return the value you need to use the return keyword like this the type of returned value should be the same as the return type or else you'll get an error so to use this call the function you can pass the returned value so you can use it like this for num is equal to square it then the value 23 and then you can write the value the value is num Like any variable in Kotlin, you can also declare a nullable variable as a parameter on the function. So let's say fun find max num1 is a in, uh, nullable integer, num2 is a nullable integer, and the return type is also a nullable integer. So we can check first if uh, both of them are null. So if num1 is equal to null and num2 is equal to null, return null. If num1 is equal to null, then by default, the max value is num2. If num2 is equal to null, then we can return the num1 as the default value. So return, so if num, so if all of uh, these ifs uh, failed, so we can return the, the value that is larger between the two. So if num1 is greater than num2, num1 else num2. And then you can call it by using uh, an integer's values or null, like so. So var num1 is equal to find max null and 5. Var num2 is equal to find max 8 and null. And then we have um, 20 and 11 value, and we both have the null values. So let's print uh, these values. And then let's run the program. So as you can see here, so our function is handling all of the possibilities if the nullable values is being passed. Okay, there is also a way to pass an unknown number of value or none at all by using the var args parameter like this. So fun print all var arg names so the type is var arg it means var arg is some kind of a collection and the type of collection will determine based on the type you put here so in our example this is a string and then let's create a for loop inside the function so for name in names print line name you can call it with values like this print all names john susan Harry and Pratt or you can call the print all names without any parameter so this this is acceptable so if we run the program 
Okay? So as you can see, we printed the number, the names, but the print all names doesn't print anything. So a limitation is that you can only have one var arg type on a given function. You can use the var arg together with other types of variable in parameter list of the function. So another way to declare a function is to use what we call a single expression function. So let's say you want to declare a function that will determine if the number is odd or even. So let's say fun is even, uh, number is equals to number of type int, and it returns boolean is equals to number modulo 2 is equals to 0. So as you can see here, the expression number modulo 2 is equals to 0 will be, will be evaluated as boolean and it will return as boolean. So we can use it something like this, uh, var number is equals to 7. So var x is equal to if is number, number, even, else, odd. So the number, number is x or whatever string is being put to x. It depends on the value that, it, that is being passed on the is even function. Sometimes you have a function that has a, a lot of parameters on it. It is tedious to write and giving it a value one by one. Uh, fortunately, Kotlin supports the default arguments and named arguments syntax. So let's discuss first the default arguments. So let's say you have a function that will assemble the name together with the honorary fix and the false fix. Like for example, uh, Dr. John Wick, MD, CPA. So let's create a function fun print name full name string and has prefix boolean is equal to false this is a parameter that has default value which is false prefix string is equal to empty has postfix bold uh, has postfix boolean is equal to false and postfix string is also empty string so var name is equal to full name If has prefix and has postfix, let's print this. Let's print it as uh, something like this. Else, if has prefix, just prefix only. Prefix and full name. And if it has postfix, just print the postfix only. And then return the name and you can use it on a number of ways like this if you look at the call to print line here it seems that you are passing a redundant value we have a required parameter which is the full name and the optional values which is the postfix and prefix. It has a postfix. So we added true and Mr. for John Doe. So it will be printed as Mr. John Doe. And if it has a prefix and postfix, Dr. Harry Wallace and the prefix is MD. And we also have the prefix only, Lowell Arnold and MBA. So if you look at the call to print line here it seems that you are passing uh, redundant values for hash prefix and prefix since by default they have a value of false and empty string respectively why not skip those two values and assign value to hash postfix and postfix directly so thankfully you can do that in kotlin using the technique called named arguments we don't need to change our function we can access the name of the parameter like this So has postfix equals to true and postfix equals to CPA. Uh, here, we entirely skip the has prefix and prefix variable because they already have their default values. So the only restriction is that once you use a named arguments on your function call, you need, you need to do it on all the rest of the variables, if any. Otherwise, it will be an error. 
So like this. So print name John Doe has prefix calls you true and then you assume that the next parameter will have used their default values but it's not because you already used the name argument. You cannot mix uh, the positioned arguments with the name arguments on a single function call. So this is how to use the function in Kotlin. I hope I covered the majority of information about functions in Kotlin. So, but if you have any questions, please feel free to write it on the comment sections below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date on these Kotlin tutorials. See you guys.